good morning, good evening, whatever it is. I hope it's good to you. Um, this is Pastor Mitchell of True Believer coming to y'all with the word for this morning. Hopefully it resonates with you throughout the holiday season or throughout the year. Um, glad to be in front of y'all. Glad you're viewing this. If uh, you are viewing it, much love to you. Appreciate you. If you're not viewing it, still much love to you. Appreciate you. Um, we're going to get into it, man. Um, as we all know, this is a very busy season. It's hectic for a lot of people. Um, a lot of running around going on, a lot of things happening in people's lives. Um, every holiday season, a lot of stuff always goes on. Um, but no matter whether it's good or bad, um, this message should embody the reason that we're all doing this for this season and throughout the year, you know, this message is universal. So hopefully it touches someone and reaches who it needs to reach. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and break the ice, throw this little jab out there. It's going to make a couple of people mad. And um, it is what it is. So to start out, Jesus was not born in December. Not on December 25th, not in December period. And the reason I'm getting into that is a lot of people don't know that. But, you know, some people do, but a lot of people don't or they choose not to believe it. But if we actually go to the word in the Bible, it tells us that when Jesus was born, you had people in the field still uh, with their herds. They were still shepherding. Some of the people lived out there with um, their herds. If you go and look at history to shepherd them and make sure wolves didn't come. So. If they're still shepherding and living in a field, it's not happening in December when it's cold. But anyway, now that we have addressed that, why would it be picked for December to be, you know, the time that we celebrate Jesus's birthday if he wasn't born in December? It's a lot of reasons for that. A whole lot. I can't get into them all this sermon because it'd be like three, four hours long. So uh, that's something we'll get into on our bids, uh, which for a true believer, that's what we call our Bible studies, bids, uh, B-I-D-D-S, which is break it down discussion. So yeah, we'll go into that on the bid. And if you have missed some bids, check them out. We're going to get them going again at the beginning of January. Uh, but we already have a few in the books. Anyway, um, yeah, that's a big discussion of why that date was chosen. But in the midst of people running around and buying gifts and planning family organization, well, organizing family get togethers and, you know, buying presents, uh, company dinners um, looking at Christmas lights and watching classic Christmas movies, which is cool. Um, having that adult eggnog flowing. Yes, you know who I'm talking. Well, y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all don't drink eggnog, but some of you do. If it has a little bit of something in there, um, yeah, I address that. And you know, uh, eating, planning on eating real good opening gifts, um, you know, in the midst of all of that, many of us actually leave out who we're supposed to be honoring on that day. You know, we leave uh, out the greatest family member or friend you could have because on that day, a lot of us end up you know, we make it about our immediate family or for some people, immediate family. If you don't have immediate family, friends. So you'll do, um, yeah, we make it about our friends or some of our friends know our family. We'll have it all together, immediate family and friends. But we tend to make it about them and ourselves 
rather than who it's supposed to be about. Um, and I said that he is the greatest family member ever, the greatest friend that a person could have. Um, so we love to see our family happy. You know, most of us, we like making our family happy. We like seeing a smile on their face. We like seeing them in a good mood. Um, like see them enjoy themselves, you know, especially when you got kids, they open the presents and everybody smiling, everybody playing, everybody happy. We, we love that. And I want to let us know today that Yahweh wants that for us. He loves to see us happy. You know, he loves to see when we're correctly using the many blessings that he gives us and the many, um, miracles that he uses for us and, um, let's say the, and, and gifts that he gives us because he gives us a lot of gifts. And once we use them correctly and we're happy with it, yeah, he likes to see that as well. But in today's society, we have become a generation of self, yeah, self first people. I'll put it that way. Self first people. Like, and we're always worried about myself or what can I get out of doing something? What's in it for me? I want this. Or I want that. Or I don't like this. Or I don't like that. I don't really care about what other people have going on at all. If it doesn't have anything to do with me, you know, it's all like self first. And being believers today we shouldn't be functioning like that at all. As being believers, we shouldn't be functioning like that. That's not good. But in the midst of everyday life, we forget that one of God's most important messages was to give. In the Bible, it talks about giving way more than it talks about receiving. Um... Matter of fact, in Acts 20, yeah, Acts 20, 35, it literally tells us it is better, uh, it is blessed to be a giver than a receiver. Let me pull this up because I know what it says and I'm paraphrasing it, but I need to make sure we get that right. Acts 20 and 35. Let's go to it. Ah, I have showed you all things, how they're so laboring. Ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It literally says that <laughs> we should be giving more than receiving. But what makes this stand out different from how we say it. We always say it's better to give than to receive. It says that, but then it doesn't. It's better to give than to receive. I might disagree with that because sometimes I might want something and receiving something to me is better than giving. Like, hey, I already don't have that much to give. So receiving, to me, that's better than giving. But if you go with what the scripture says, it is more blessed to give than to receive. That's how we should say it. Rather than it's better to give than to receive, you will get blessed more by giving than you would receiving. Now we can't argue with it. We can still have our point of view. I think receiving is better, but the scripture is letting you know I'll get blessed more by giving than receiving. So there's a little something that we should look at a little bit different. But like I was saying, the Bible talks about giving more than it does receiving. But somewhere in our minds as a generation, we, like I just demonstrated, 
we have put in place to where we feel it's better to receive than to give. Like we flipped it. The Bible says you'll be blessed to give than to receive. But many of us feel we're blessed when we receive and we don't want to give. We need to flip that back. We're looking at that all wrong. So with that being said, which is, Walter, I know you're watching this. Um, another example of how important and meaningful it is to give is John 3.16. It said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He, whoever believeth in him, shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. I know I probably mixed up a couple of words in there, but the main part I'm getting at is like he said, he gave his only son. So God, once again, gave. That's a big thing. He talks about giving and then he demonstrates giving by giving his only son. Now, with that, that one gift of his son, I'm not going to be before you guys long today, but that one gift of his son gave us hope and a doorway to everlasting life. Without God giving us that gift, do we have hope? Not really. Do we have hope of going to an everlasting life? No, no, we, yeah, we really don't. Uh, we're out of there. So we would get a perfect and everlasting life by accepting this gift that God gave. But if we don't want to accept it, then we will get another life. Well, you, yes, you will. But it won't be a perfect and everlasting life. It will be a life of uh, torture and <laughs> a torture and terribleness and, and treachery and things of that nature and gnashing of the teeth, as it said, a uh, life of everlasting death. We can put it that way. Uh, that's what we will receive without the gift of hope that God gave us. So, hmm. With that, I want to ask you this. By God giving us that gift, we have hope of everlasting life today. So, as believers, we're supposed to be giving more than receiving. Giving of ourselves, doing things for people, helping, doing all kinds of stuff. As the Bible illustrates, we should do. So, who is our giving giving hope to, if you understand. Like if I'm out giving and doing things for people, who is it giving hope to? Or are we not giving at all to give somebody hope? That's something I'm thinking about. Who is our giving, giving life to? Just like God gave to us his son, which now we have a chance of getting everlasting life. So who is our gifts giving life to? It's just a question. I was thinking about that when God was giving this to me. Who was our stuff giving? Because it's supposed to, just like his gift did. A lot of us don't really give it all until this time of year. We don't help others. We don't volunteer as shelters or donate. Um, we don't help family members. We don't help friends. We don't even help people on our job that need help. You know, a lot of us. But right, it's like when this time of year comes around now. Oh, yeah, let me go volunteer at the shelter. Let me go help the homeless. Let me go do this. Oh, yeah, I can help. It's like we got a designated time in our mind. During this season is when we help. Any other time, no. But in the Bible, the Lord never specified a particular season that we give. Never said around winter time is when you should do your giving. That wasn't in there. So 
I think we're going at this with the wrong kind of mindset. We should be doing this throughout the year, helping throughout the year, giving throughout the year. But we'll get to that another time. Anyway, if the shoe fits some of us as believers, this shoe that we don't give and don't help and don't do, this shoe should not fit believers of Christ. But looking at the world we live in in reality, I know it does. And the thing is, if it does fit us or you as a person, it's a really a sad reflection on us as believers of Christ because we are not imitating the behavior that Christ told us to imitate. We're not imitating him who was supposed to be our leader. We're imitating the behaviors of the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the scribes that Christ did not like when we do certain things, certain kind of ways. Like the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they had it in their culture to where if they wanted to help someone, they had to let everybody know they were helping someone. They had to let everybody know who they helped, what they helped with. Uh, and they did it in front of people so they can get praise from other people. You know, hey, I just gave this person here who did not have food, enough food for a week. Give me thanks and praise for doing that for him. And everybody is, oh my goodness, you're such a good dude. And then there'll be another person that, oh yes, this family didn't have a place to live. And what I did was took out of my house and bought them sticks and stones and we got the mud and we made them a home because they didn't have a place to live. And they're, oh my goodness, you got to eat. Yes, yes, yes. They would eat that up. That's what they did. So people could look at them and be like, oh, they're such good people. But Jesus had a problem with them. Because he said, you're not doing this out of the kindness of your heart. You're not doing it because it's something that you want to do. You're doing it for praise from people. So next time some of y'all go and visit the homeless shelter or try to help the homeless, do it without recording it. Leave your phone in your pocket. Don't post it. Don't tell a whole lot of people what you're doing. And watch how God works for you. Because right now, it seems that around this time of year, we're going to get a lot of videos. Oh, I was helping the people. Or I was doing this. Or I was doing that. And they posting it. But you like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. You're posting it because you want people to hit that like button and type in, oh my goodness, you're such a good person. Oh my goodness. But the Bible says that when you do that, God doesn't give you a reward. He says your reward is that person saying you did a good job. That's your reward. So it'll make us rethink some of the stuff that we do as far as giving. I feel that we should be given more anyway. That's just my personal opinion. As believers, we should do more for people, but we don't have to put cameras in our face and post everything that we're doing to let everybody know what's going on. And if you look at it from the other side, just think if you were the person that needed help and a person comes to help you, but they're flashing all these pictures and putting these phones all in your face and taking pictures and this here. And yo, we're going to post it on social media. Would you want everybody posting that you were broke? And letting everybody know you were broke and this person came and helped you? Would you want them to know that you were in a bad place in your life, that you needed help and that this was going on? Like you want millions of strangers to view this and know? What's going on in your life? You wouldn't want that. So why do we do that to other people? I'm just thinking about that right now. Like, yeah, I wouldn't want that. Yeah, I may need help. And if you come to help me, God bless you for helping me. God bless you for donating to me and pouring into my life. God bless you for that. But I don't want you broadcasting it to people I don't even know. For people to use that against me later 
all for it to be an embarrassing position to me. It may turn me off to you as a person. You know, I might refuse your help. No thanks. Because if it comes with all that, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Just think about if the shoe was on the other foot. Would you want somebody putting the camera in your face? But anyway. Hmm. Let me go ahead and, and find where I was. My bad. But here we go. That's what the Sadducees and the, the scribes and the Pharisees did. Our Lord and Savior didn't. So as believers, if this is the type of behavior we have going on, then we're not honoring our Lord and Savior because he would never do that. Yahweh gave us his best. With that gift of Christ, he gave us his best. And his best gave us his all. Like literally his all, everything he had, his life, took a lot for us. So Yahweh gives us his best, his best gives us his life. So my question for us and myself, remember this, when I'm doing these sermons and I'm talking to people, I'm not just pointing at you. Hey, this is y'all, you do this, you do that, y'all, y'all, y'all. No, this is for me too. For me to be doing what I'm doing, the word reflects on me first. It makes me look inward first. I can't give you these words and I'm not really living by them at all. No. Well, it's people that do do it. But anyway, no. This is for me too. But just think. What I was about to say was the question I have for us. This holiday season, which of us is giving God our all? God gave us his best. His best gave us his all. Which one of us is giving God our all? I know we say we do in songs, you know, make it sound all good. I surrender all. All of that type of stuff. We do all of that. Make it sound real good. When we in church, we throw our hands up. Oh, God, I give you all of me, Lord. Oh, God. All of that. Yeah, cool. But when we buy ourselves, nobody around. We not at church. It's just you. Who is really giving God their all? And to be fair, he should expect our all because that's what he gave to us. I can't expect something from you that I don't give. So if God gave it, he should expect it. But who is actually doing it? That's a little bit different. Matter of fact, let's turn to Mark 12, 41 and 44. And while we're there, I'm going to read you this. And Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how people cast money into the treasury and many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow has cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. All right, what this is saying is this. He had just finished preaching to a group of people that really didn't like him. And it was time to give an offer. And when they came, you had a lot of rich people throwing all kind of money in the, in the bucket. A lady walks up. She has two mites. I had to look this up. Two mites equals two-fifths of one cent. So she didn't even have 
half of a penny. And this is all she had. Less than half of a penny. Not all she had on her right then. No, this is all she had, period. That's why he said, even in her living, this is all she has. So this woman literally gives the Lord all she has. While everybody else is throwing in all kind of big bucks, money, everything like that. But what he tells his disciples is that they are giving out of their abundance, which to me, it says this. They gave out of their abundance. They're giving out of what they have left over, which is a lot. So abundance, like it says, is you have overflowing. I got so much. Oh, my goodness. So these dudes are rich. They got so much money. Oh, my goodness. It's just, I got so much. It's nothing. So for me to put a 1000 in church, that's nothing. For me to put 2000 in church, that's nothing. For me to put 100 in church, that's nothing. 500, it's nothing. Like, I got so much money, this is nothing. So what he says is they're giving me what they have left over, which is a lot. They got a whole lot left over. That's what they're giving. Something that's not significant to them. It doesn't hurt them. They don't miss it at all. That's what they're giving. But what she gave is everything she had. It's a big difference. By her giving everything she had, she gained the attention of the Lord right then. It says, then he called his disciples over and said, she just gave more than everybody else. If you want to get the attention of the Lord, which it just says right here, you're going to have to give something that means something to you. You got to give him something that actually means something. We can't keep giving God what we got left over. And I'm not saying that a bunch of us are rich. Some of us are not rich at all. And we still give God what we have left over. We take our money for everything else that we want to do. Stuff that we need, stuff that we want. Stuff that might happen, this here, that there. Okay, yeah, oh, I got this left over. Let me put this aside and I'm going to get this to the church. Oh, I'm going to get this to the Lord. We'll give him what's left over. You got people that got a whole lot of money. Well, I'll just drop this in there. But I mean, they should be happy they got it. Because that's a whole lot. It may be a whole lot to the church, but what does it mean to you? That's where the difference comes in. But I'm like, she gave her all and it immediately got the attention of the Lord. Think about that. What are we giving him? Are we giving him something that's going to make him look at us like he did to other people? Oh, they're just throwing in from abundance. And yeah, it's cool. Or are we giving him something that's going to make him notice who we are? That's another question. Man, I'm filled with questions today. But anyway, when you give God something like that, like of everything you have, you just gave it to God. God is going to give back to you. And the thing is that once you give like that, it ain't like she was, it didn't say she was holding it and debating back and forth whether she should give it. No, say she just gave it. Everything I have, I just gave it. So what do you think God is going to do for you? He's going to give back to you according to the measure of your heart. That woman's heart proved to the Lord right then that he could bless her with a whole lot because she gave her all to him. So he can give her a whole lot, the best that he has for her. The Bible states that once you give, stuff will be given unto you. But the thing is, we want stuff that's given to us from man. We don't want that. Well, we shouldn't want that. We want God to give to us. 
whatever man gives us, yeah, we could add that to, you know, whatever else comes later. But we want God to give to us first. That's how we should be feeling as believers. I'm giving to you because it's in my heart to give. I love giving. I love doing righteous things. I want to give. I want to help. I want to do this. And doing that, I don't expect anything back. I'm just doing it because that's what I want to do. That's what's in my heart. It says the abundance of the heart is what overflows. That's what people do is what's in their heart to do. So if it's in my heart to be good, I'm going to be good. And what God is going to do is reward me for doing what's good. That's how that works. But regardless of how much money, your social status, or your circumstances, we can give God more honor if we give more. We honor him with giving. Matter of fact, yeah, let's go to Proverbs 11, 23 and 24. Proverbs. And with this one here, I'm going to read it in two different translations because King James is a little wordy with this one. So we're going to get you in there. But it says, the desire of the righteous is only good, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. There is that scattereth and yet increaseth. And there is that withholdeth more than is meat, but it tendeth to poverty. See, it's saying that the desire of the righteous is to do good. But the expectation of people that do wrong, they should expect to get the wrath of the Lord. But, and it says there are some people that are constantly giving. That's what it's saying, it's scattering. They constantly give, but yet, they get increased, but it's people that kind of hold on to it or don't give or don't do stuff, and it leads them to poverty. They're like always poor for some reason. Read that in another translation just so you understand it a little bit better. English Standard Version. And it says, the desire of the righteous ends only in good. The expectation of the wicked in wrath. One gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. He ends up broke when he's trying to withhold what he should be putting out. Think about that. How many of us are broke and we know we should be doing something else and wonder why we keep ending up in the same position? Probably because God is wanting you to give some stuff and you want to hold on to it. So he has to take everything from you to try to teach you a lesson. But you ain't heard that from me, though. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, you did. But... um. This holiday, like I said, I wasn't going to be before you long. This holiday season and beyond, let's remember the greatest gift to us that has allowed us to have a reason to smile, that has allowed us to have a reason to hope, that has allowed us to have a way to everlasting life. That gave us a reason to strive for something better. That's what that gift did. The gift of Jesus gave us all of that. And let's honor that gift by giving our praises and our thanks to Yahweh as we should. And by giving ourselves to Yahweh. More of ourselves than we've been given. Let's try to give him our all. While at the same time, giving to others and helping others as well. That would honor God. I think he would look down and smile on us and really bless us. Because if he's talking about giving and he gave for us, we should give for him. And when we're giving of ourselves and we're helping others, we're helping shine that godly light on some people that may need it at that time. 
They may have been in a dark place, really needed help. And that little bit of godly light that you shined on them could have given them something that brought them back to life. Could have given them something they needed that they hadn't had in a while or something that they lost. We don't know what that godly light could do for them. But if we shine it, God will get all the glory for it. And he'll make sure that he gets you for helping them. He'll make sure you get paid for that. So let's think about giving a little bit more from this holiday season and throughout the year. Let's do things for others. Let's help others. Let's get out there and shine that light. Hopefully you all like this message. Like I said, it wasn't going to be real long. If you want to donate to us, you can. I had it at the beginning of the clip. You know where you can get on and all of that. But for myself and the True Believer family, we love you. Be safe for this holiday season. Be safe throughout the year. And we'll see you next week. Love you guys.